And so at this time, we want to open up and go to God in prayer as we begin. Let's uh, go to God in prayer at this time. Heavenly Father, Creator of all earth and the heavens, of all creation, Father, mankind and beasts, of all plants and living things, Father, we come before you humbly thanking you, Father, for all that you have done for us, Father. Thank you for your love, yes. for your mercy toward us, your grace, for your patience with us, Father. We thank you for guiding us through this life, and as we walk, you've given us understanding on how to think, how to act, and how to speak, Father, within ourselves, and also to our neighbors, to our brethren as well, Father. We ask that you may continue, Father, to pour down wisdom from heaven so we can understand how to move about in this life, Father, that we may be and remain unspotted from this world, that we may gain others to judge correctly so that they will be sanctified, saved, and then unspotted, Father, by obedience to all of your word. We ask, Father, that you may enter into the reins of our hearts, and, Father, that you may wash away any unrighteousness and teach us, Father, your ways. The same ways and steps that, that your apostles walked. That we, Father, may be in agreement. Not just in this present building, Father, but away from you. Where there are no eyes but yours looking, Father. We ask that you may continue to guide those, Father, who are having misunderstanding of the scriptures. That they may be enlightened. We ask that you may... Give patience to those who need patience, Father. Strength for those who need strength. Pray that you may heal those who are sick, Father. Shut in. We ask that you watch over uh, our brother Marcus's daughter, Noah. Amen. Pray that she may be healed, Father, by thy power from heaven. We ask that you may watch over brother Mark Carr. Yes. Heal him, Father's infirmity in his body, Father. And ask also for brother Ozan, Father, that you may heal him and his body as well. Father, and that all may be well within the future. We ask, Father, that you may continue to guide us and lead us, comfort those, Father, who are feeble, and strengthen us as well. We ask this all in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, we'll be reading from uh, Psalms chapter is 119. Uh, the verses will be 1 through 8. Blessed are the undefiled in the way, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies, and that seek him with the whole heart. They also do no iniquity, they walk in his ways. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes, then shall I not be ashamed, when I have respect unto all thy commandments. I will praise thee with uprightness of heart when I shall have learned thy righteous judgments. I will keep thy statutes, O forsake me not utterly. Amen. Let's uh, turn to page 250, the great redeemer. Page 250. If you have it, let us sing. How I love the great redeemer who is doing so much for me. With what joy I tell the story Of the love that makes men free Till my earthly life is ended I will sing songs above Then beside the crystal sea More and more my soul shall be Praising Jesus and His love He is everything to me he is everything to me, and everything shall always be. I will never cease to raise a song of gladness in His praise. Here and in the world above, my soul shall sing of saving love. Life and light and joy is He, the precious friend who died for me. He has purchased my redemption, rolled my burden of sin away, and is walking on beside me. 
Growing dearer day by day That is why I sing His praises That is why joy is mine That is why forevermore On the everlasting shore I shall sing of love divine He is everything to me he is everything to me, and everything shall always be. I will never cease to raise the song of gladness in His praise. Here and in the world above, my soul shall sing of saving love. Life and light and joy is He. The precious friend who died for me. Glory be to him forever. Endless praises to Christ the Lamb. He has filled my life with sunshine. He has made me what I am. Oh, that everyone would know him. Oh, that all would adore. Trust the love of the mighty friend above and be his forevermore. He is everything to me. He is everything to me. And everything shall always be. I will never cease to raise a song of gladness in his praise. Here and in the world above, my shows to see. The scripture I have chosen for tonight be uh, Matthew chapter 5 verse 1 through 6 Matthew chapter 5 verses 1 oh, excuse me uh, verses 3 through 6 and it reads as follows blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven blessed are they that mourn for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they who do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. The song selection that I've chosen tonight <coughs> is hymn 357. Uh, how beautiful heaven must be and you know we can only imagine how beautiful heaven must be but we know based upon our faith in God we know that God has given us the assurance and confidence that heaven is a beautiful place <coughs> that we as Christians hope to dwell and to inherit eternal life with Jesus Christ. 357, let us try all four standards of hymn 357. How beautiful heaven must be. If you have it, let us gather to sing. We read of a place that's all heaven is made for the pure and the free. These truths in authority has given. How beautiful heaven must be. Oh, how beautiful heaven must be, must be. In all of the happy and free. Fair heaven of rest for the weary. How beautiful heaven must be in heaven no drooping no pining no wish 
wish your boy is where to be. God's light is forever there shining. How beautiful heaven must be. Oh, how beautiful heaven must be, must be. Filled all the happy and free. Fair heaven, the rest of the weary. How beautiful heaven must be. Pure waters of life there are flowing, and all who will drink may be free. Red jewels of the splendor of glowing. How beautiful heaven must be. Oh, how beautiful heaven must be, must be. Living home the happy and free. Fair heaven of rest for the Beautiful heaven must be. The angels so sweetly are singing up there by the beautiful sea. The song of redemption we ringing. How beautiful heaven must be. Oh, how beautiful. Heaven must be, must be the home of the happy and free. We are heaven of this for the weary. How beautiful heaven must be. Let's all say amen. amen. Praise God Almighty. Praise God Almighty. If you have your Bibles, please turn with us to the book of Psalms. This will be the 28th division of the book of Psalms. We will read all nine verses. Psalm 28, verse 1. Unto thee will I cry, O Lord, my rock. Be not silent to me, lest if thou be silent to me, I become like them that go down into the pit. Hear the voice of my supplications. And I cry unto thee, and I lift up my hands toward thy holy oracle. Draw me not away with wicked and with the workers of iniquity which speak peace to their neighbors but mischief is in their hearts. Verse 4, give them according to their deeds according to the wickedness of their endeavors. Give them after the work of their hands render them their desert. Because they regard not, I forgive me, render them to the desert, to their them to the desert. Because they regard not the works of the Lord, nor the operation of his hands. Verse 5 says, He shall destroy them and not build them up. Blessed be the Lord, because he had heard the voice of my supplication. The Lord is my strength and my shield. Because my heart trusted in him, and I help, I am helped. Therefore my heart greatly rejoices, and with my song will I praise him. The Lord is their strength, and he is the saving strength of his anointed. Save thy people, 
and bless thine inheritance. Feed them also and lift them up forever. And the Lord had a choice blessing those who read here and do his word. This time let us go to Heavenly Father in prayer. Father God, we thank you for your son Jesus, his love, his mercy, and his grace. Allow us to approach you, Lord, we may honor your name with words from our heart. Father God, we ask you to continue to remember all those that are in need, Lord, especially the saints. A special blessing, let it be from thee to them. Those that have need of finances, health, those that have need of runaways being returned back to their families, those that have needed comfort because of the loss of a loved one, those that need to be returned back to the fold before it's too late, those that have yet to be born again through your Holy Spirit, those, Father, who have a fear of ordaining leaders, those who have a fear of being a leader, give them the need that they lack, Lord, the strength they need that they may step forward and do what's right. Father God, we ask you to pour thy love into all the homes, especially those that bear your name. We ask you, Lord, to help us on this earth, especially the saints, to lead the way in this, to treat each other as we would have them treat us. For sure, this will please you, Lord, and glorify your name. Father God, as we go further through this service, bless us, Lord, that we will be able to lift up your heart in complete joy by words coming from our heart that will truly be from us with sincerity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You have your songbook, saints. Let us please look at 159. 159. He's a wonderful Savior to me. 159. If you have it, we'll sing all four verses. I was lost in sin, but Jesus rescued me. He's a wonderful Savior to me. I was bound by fear, but Jesus set me free. He's a wonderful Savior to me. For He's a wonderful Savior to me. He's a wonderful Savior to me. I was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. He's a wonderful Savior to me. He's a friend so true, so Patient and so kind, he's a wonderful savior to me. Everything I need in him I always find. He's a wonderful savior to me. For he's a wonderful savior to me. He's a wonderful savior to me. I was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. He's a wonderful Savior to me. He is always near to comfort and to cheer. He's a wonderful Savior to me. He forgives my sins. He guides my every tear. He's a wonderful for Savior to me, for He's a wonderful Savior to me. He's a wonderful Savior to me. I was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. He's a wonderful Savior to me. Dearer grows the love of Jesus day by day. He's a wonderful Savior to me. Sweeter is His grace while pressing on my way. He's a wonderful Savior to me. For He's a wonderful Savior to me. He's a wonderful Savior to me. I was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. He's a wonderful Savior to me. 
Amen. Praise Almighty God above. Have a message to give this day, saints of God. Message that will encourage you and I to do the things which are right in the eyesight of Almighty God. And the topic that we're going to use for encouragement, why do we praise the Lord? Why do we praise the Lord? Now you know, we have to understand that Almighty God is to be praised, but sometimes we may not realize why it is that we should praise Him. Look at, if you will, Psalms 9. Ninth division of Psalms. Why, why do we praise the Lord? Psalm 9. This is a psalm that we can sing. But we're going to read these words. I will praise thee, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will show forth all thy marvelous words. So therefore we learn God gives us thing before our eyes that we see a marvelous work. Marvelous things that we could not have done ourselves. He says I will be glad and rejoice in thee. I will sing praise to thy name, O thou most high. When my enemies are turned back they shall fall and perish at thy presence. So therefore God rejects our enemies from attacking us and having their way with us. Another reason to praise the Lord God Almighty. Marvelous works and defeating the enemy. For thou hast maintained my right and my cause. Thou satest in the throne judging right. Look at this thought. The Lord has given us our right. See, you know, we have right. Sometimes we take those rights for granted. And we think that man loves us so much. He wants to give us that right. But God maintains that right. He sits in the throne and he judges right. In addition to that. Verse 5. Thou hast rebuked the heathen. Thou hast destroyed the wicked. Thou hast put out their name forever and ever. Do you know that there are nations that if they wanted to they would just gather. If they could have it their way and just attack all the innocent nations. Just kill them and rape the women and make it theirs but we have to understand God keeps this out of balance because the Lord is desirous that we should do what he said and not what we want sometimes we think that God may only care uh, about those who are his children but look if you will to 2nd Chronicles 2nd Chronicles chapter 35 Second Chronicles 35. God blesses everybody, not just the saints. And that's why I said that those that are not members of the church are too ignorant to receive the thought and notion they must praise Him. But they would take His blessings all day long. Now let's look. Josiah has done some great deeds. We see in 2 Chronicles 35 and 20. After all this, when Josiah had prepared the temple, Necho, or Necho, king of Egypt, came up to fight against Charchemish by Euphrates. And Josiah went out against him. But he sent ambassadors to him, saying, What I have I to do with thee, thou king of Judah? I have come not against thee this day, but against the house where I, went, I have war. But look what he says. For God commanded me to make haste. Forbear thee from meddling with God. Who is with me. That he destroyed thee. Now, now you got to understand something. God got only one nation at this point. You know. And we have to understand is that. This particular place here. Uh, Charchemish by Euphrates. Some reason Josiah does not want him to attack this particular place. But you and I have to understand when God is ready to make a move on something, uh, you and I had better make haste to let him do his work or we'll find ourselves in trouble with the Lord. 
And this is something that we cannot in any way afford to do. And so he says, verse 22, Nevertheless, Josiah would not turn his face from him, but disguised himself that he might fight with him and hearken not unto the words of Nico for the mouth of God. This came from God. And came to fight in the valley of Megiddo. Okay, so now we got a situation uh, here where we have to understand what will God do in a case like this. Well, let's see. Verse 23. And the archer shot at King Josiah. And the king said to his servants, have me away. I am sore wounded. His servant therefore took him out of the chariot, put him in the second chariot that he had. And they brought him to Jerusalem. And he died and was buried. And one of the sepulchres of his fathers. And all Judah and Jerusalem mourned for Josiah. And Jeremiah lamented for Josiah. And his, look at this. And all the singing men and the singing women spake of Josiah and lamentations to this day. And made them an honor to Israel. Behold, they are written in the lamentations. Now the rest of the acts of Josiah and his goodness according to that which was written in the law of the Lord. And his deeds first and last. Behold, they are written in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah. Okay, he's a good guy. What did he do? He did not understand God is over all kingdoms. And God has pricked the heart of Nico. And somehow, see, we don't know. We don't know if a prophet came and told Nico. Even though he's an Egyptian king. Now remember something. Who anointed the Syrian king to rise up and fight against Israel if they did not listen to Jehu and Elisha? Elijah was told, you don't have to know him. Why? Because I want him to whoop Israel. If they don't listen to the king of Israel and to the prophet. So he has to go and anoint a Syrian who isn't even the king yet at the time. He has to anoint him to tell him you are going to take over. The whooping to Israel. And so one of the things we have to understand. That this is what's wrong with us. There's a problem with us. And that's why some of us. Can just simply not praise God in truth. There's a problem with us. See you know it's one thing to be accurate. But it's one thing to know what you're doing with accuracy. See you can have a weapon. But you end up cutting somebody you shouldn't be cutting on. You may be an expert at handling. But if you don't know how to maneuver through crowds where they are innocent and that they are strong that are against you you'll end up hurting somebody and this was wrong with the saints and, and so you have an understanding that what is the problem with the saints of God the problem with the saints of God is we want for some crazy reason to dip in God's business that's the problem we dip in God's business and we did not understand this is a king of Egypt this guy is not even affiliated with Israel but we don't know. Just like sometimes people will say, God told Adam, don't eat the tree. I remember I heard that before. He told E the same thing. We can read what he told Adam. You and I don't know what he told E. You have no idea what he told E. Because you have no record of God talking to E. You have no record before he comes and punishes her for eating the tree. See, that's a problem. See, that's missing info. So I remember somebody said, you know, she, she added that. I remember I said, I have to come back and apologize because I stopped. I remember reviewing that, come back to the same was years ago, and I said, nah, I don't know what God told he, and neither you and I, and neither the person that said she had. See, this is what's wrong, that we do know one thing, God went to the cool of the day every day, so we don't think that God talked to him every day if he went to talk to him on that day. He went and talked. So there were conversations that we don't need the information. This is what's wrong with us. That conversation, don't touch the tree, in no way affects the truth of the first statement. Don't eat the tree. It in no way affects it. But somebody got smart and said, hey, you know, this is legal. No, no. See, that's what's wrong with us. And then some will even go to the extent to say Eve lied. Because we, we just can't accept. God don't tell you and me everything. God did not tell Josiah because it's none of his business. He didn't ask Josiah to get into this battle. And that's what many of us do in the church of Christ. Go and dip in other battles that we have absolutely nothing to do with. 
We get involved with battles to where we go into areas of politics thing. We don't have nothing to do with that. Brother Fritz. Yes, uh, I was just looking at this as a, as a principality because these are actual rulers. Mm -hmm. You know, two kings. Amen. Good you know, point. And um, he was supposed to take heed. You know, Josiah uh, was supposed to take heed to understand that the ambassadors... When they said, what have, what have I to do with the, the king of Judah? Good point, preacher. You know, he was to verify. There was nothing wrong with praying to God, confirming it. There's prophets in Israel that's right. to confirm it. You know, because that's the job of the prophets. That's the job of the Holy Spirit as well. Amen. Is to confirm. And there's nothing wrong with Josiah going up and, and requesting counsel from other prophets. That's right, bro. Faithful prophets to confirm it. But, you know, his lust for to battle was, was so heavy that he thought this was a lie. That's right. He thought That's it was right. a lie, you know. And so uh, this is something that needs to be taken heed of to where even the Bereans. The Bereans were more noble than those of Thessalonica. They searched the scriptures daily. Yes. What are those things to so? So you, you check again, you know. Uh, reproof. You prove it again, you know. And, Amen. And so this is uh, a slip up from Josiah. And it, it did cost him. Good job, preacher. God bless you, Javier. And we, and we have to understand that, saints. As Brother Frieza said, it's a slip up. And look what it cost him his life. Now, we, we, we understand he's a righteous man. We understand he has his place in the kingdom when the Lord returns and takes him from paradise. But you cut your life short. A lot of saints do that. Sometimes you want to work real hard, help people. But if you work too many jobs and you end up running under an 18-wheeler, you're dead. Now, your family don't have you no more. If you got a million dollars in the morning after they told you the wreck happened, you still don't have them. So this is one of these incidences. Getting involved with something you shouldn't have. Doing more than God has asked them to do. Just like sometimes we'll work, we'll work. We'll, you work too much. You fall asleep. Drive, there's many accidents due to fatigue. So we want to make sure. And then also we can take another person's life. So we don't want to do that. You know, the, the magnificence of this is... Elijah is told Hazael will be the guy that's going to punish Israel if they don't listen to the, to, to the uh, prophet and to Jehu the king, which the prophet would have been Elisha. You know what's sad about that, though, is that Hazael isn't even the king at the time that Elisha, and that, uh, that they talked to him. And he goes and he kills the present king because he's, He's, he's laying on the bed. He puts a thick, wet towel on him, smothers him, and takes over. <laughs> he, he, wasn't even, he didn't even know how he was going to get it. He had to figure it out himself. But the Lord said, you know, yeah, you know you're going to get it. So we know for a fact now with this man saying, God, somebody told him to what he needed to do. And he do, and it had nothing to do with you. That's powerful. So let's remember that, saying Sometimes you see some battles on the earth. You may see a nation attack another nation. You may go, oh, that's so bad. They're attacking that nation and they're innocent people. And, but, but could you go to the judgment and say they were wrong? Wouldn't you be embarrassed and sent to hell if you went against them? And then God said, no, I, I sent them to do that. So as Brother Fred said, counsel with the Lord. You see a battle happening or something? And you see something wrong. You really don't know. If they've been putting off food. You have to ask our Lord. If not, this. I pray all will be judged in the right way. I pray you oversee it. Let no innocent suffer. You can say all those things. But, but, but you got to be careful. See, that's why you got to understand something. So I'm going to be honest with you. I've said it before. I'm going to say it to the day I die. You are a soldier in God's army. Young men and women. You get into the military. You better know how to handle yourself. As you get into an area where you're taking people's life. I'm telling you, when you die, you're going to give an account for a life taken that was innocent. You say, well, there were enemies coming at me with a gun. What were you doing on their property? See, people don't think about that. Do you know Do you know if you own somebody's property that's there, you know they can kill you if you don't get off of it? Even in domestic life. Got to think about those things. So, God bless you, Brother Fred. Now, let's look at a couple more thoughts here. Why do we praise the Lord? Let's look at 1 John chapter 4, if you will. 1 John chapter 4. He loved us first. My goodness, what a statement. How many of us love somebody? You know, usually when you love somebody, they don't love you. First thing people come out their mouth with, you a fool. You a fool behind him. You a fool behind. Oh, he's a fool behind her. But God's not a fool. 
God loved us first. First John chapter 4, verse 15. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus, the Son of God, dwelleth in him, and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God had to us. God is love. You can't out love God. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God. And God in him. Herein is our love made perfect. That we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. This is why we praise him. As God is, he's enabled us to be like him. Now see, he did that when he made us. But once you sin, you get off track. And you cannot get back on track without God. Verse number 17, he says, uh, Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in the world. you got to be that. And if you're not that, that's something wrong with you and me. There is no fear in love, verse 18, but perfect love casts out fear. Now, does that mean that there won't be something to bother you or that you'll be concerned about? No. This type of a fear, obviously, will cause you to lose your soul because fear hath torment. He that feared is not made perfect in love. Brother Fritz taught a lesson where uh, Gideon was afraid to go. The Lord knew he was afraid. The Lord told him, okay, you got your army, you say, I want you to go down there. If you're afraid, I forgot the gentleman's name. And Brother Fritz taught us that take this person with you. And he went. Like Brother taught, Gideon wasn't afraid to go in battle, but he was afraid to go by himself. So was Barak. And Deborah didn't go and fight with him, but she stood there. Said, if you go with me, she didn't have no history with no woman going in battle like that, a prophetess, uh, a, a, a judge, should I say, in her case. She went, but he said, go with me. He didn't say, go with me and fight. Go with me. He needed encouragement. So never be afraid to encourage a person to do that which the Lord has sent him to do. He says, we love him, verse 19, because he first loved us. That's the, that's the hit right there. If a man say, I love God, now if this is true and we say we love him and hate his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he had seen, how can he love God whom he had not seen? And this is the commandment have we from him. That he who loveth God, loveth brother also. That's the coming, and that's why we praise him. Another reason we praise him because he is merciful. Look at Psalm 25. Because he is merciful. You're going to need mercy as a judgment, saints. It's not going to be about works. I'm telling you now, you're wasting your time with these ignorant men. It's going to be about mercy. There's a lot of people not getting in. And Jesus said that many will come to me and say these things. Oh, Lord, they're not getting in. Psalm 25 and 6. Remember, O oh Lord, thy tender mercies and thy loving kindness. Look at this. I'm going to show I say this right. Thy loving kindnesses. Plural. A lot of kindness from law. Multiple layers. For they have been ever of old. He's always been like that. Remember not the sins of my youth. Nor my transgressions. According to thy mercy. That is again. Remember thou me for thy goodness's sake. O oh Lord. Good and upright is Lord. Therefore will he teach sinners in the way. In the way. The meek will he guide judgment. And the meek will he teach his way. So that's why we praise him. Look at Psalm 40. Not an accident. We know what we're doing. Everybody should be praising God. Psalm 40. Look at verse 11. Withhold not thou thy tender mercies from me, O Lord. Let thy loving kindness and thy truth continually preserve me. For innumerable evils have compassed me about. My iniquities have taken hold upon me so that I am not able to look up. They are more than the hairs of mine head. Therefore my heart fed me. Be pleased, O Lord, to deliver me. Why does he say that? Because when Jesus prayed, Jesus said, Not my will, but thy will be done. Why do we say that? Because we want the Lord to be happy with what he's going to do for us. O Lord, make haste to help me. You say, why would we want the Lord to be happy? Listen, the Lord said that he gave Israel a king because 
They were troubling him. And he was angry with them, bothering him. And he said, when the last king stood, he said, and I took this one away in my anger also. So you don't want God to do something for you because you keep bugging him in the sense of it's not the thing you need. You say, will he do that? You better believe he will. And after he get through whooping your head, then he'll rescue if you call on him in a sincere heart. How do we know? They kept bothering the Lord about me. This light bread, we loathe it. There's a light wafer. And he said, I'm going to give you quail till they come out your nose. See, that means I'm mad at you. You bother me. I don't know if you've ever done that to your kid or something. You know, here, take, go ahead, take it. And you know it, it's going to more than likely get them in trouble. Not cause them to die, not cause them to go to jail, but just it's not going to be pleasant to them. And they'll come back and whine about, you know, it, it, it wouldn't work. I told you it wasn't going to work. Say, so why would they do that? Because as Elisha and a song for heart was sad, Elijah had to go. And he didn't even, the thing, he just taken up. He didn't see his body mangle off and fall off a cliff. He just, he left to the other side of life. And so Elisha is sitting there sorrowful. He has a double portion of the strength of Elijah. And then all of a sudden, the other young men, other men of age, what have you, that knew Elijah, these other prophets that were working together, they come up, other holy men, and say, we're going to go find your master's body. And he said, no, no, don't go. And they kept on pressing. We got, we got several groups of men. We got a lot of people. We'll find them. Lay on the mountain somewhere. We don't want to leave it there. And they troubled them till it shamed him. Made him embarrassed. Like kids are not, please, please, in your bed, please. Go ahead. And they came back sad. They hunted all day long. Normally you're going to find about it. People spread out. You find about it because it's dead. It's not running from you. And they came back. We didn't find it. It was sad. He said, didn't I tell you don't go? Then why did he send away? Because you're bothering me. You're embarrassing me. But the Lord tells us, ask him diligently. Yes, for the things that we have a right to have. So I say, how we know the difference? God know the Lord. David knew him. That's why David didn't ask for Bathsheba. He know God's going to say, no, you can't have another man. White man, please. He did give him Michal, Shaw, some may pronounce it, would have became another man's wife. But Saul, her evil daddy, gave him her to this other man because he hated David. But she had originally been given to David. So he had a right to her. The other guy leaves crying. Well, that's sorrowful, but you were tricked, friend. It wasn't your wife. But this woman, he knew. Bathsheba, do not ask him, for he knew. Because you cannot have her. And so therefore, we understand this. Why do we praise him? His mercy, his love for us. All the evils he protect us from. But we want him to be happy with what he's going to do for us. Verse 13. Oh Lord make haste to help me. He said let them be ashamed and confounded together that seek out my soul to destroy. Let them be driven backwards and put to shame that wish me evil. Let them that be desolate for reward of their shame that say unto me. Aha. Aha. Uh -huh. You know people do that. You know. They do that to you. You know, ha 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 yeah. The Lord. And they'll tell you the Lord got it. The Lord didn't get nobody but he coming for you. For saying that. Verse 6. And let all those that seek thee rejoice and be glad in thee. Let such as love thyself. That's the second thing. The Lord be magnified. See we got to praise him. And this is why. Because all the things he does for us. But I am poor and needy. Yet the Lord thinketh upon me. Thought my help and my deliverer. Make no tarrying, oh my God. And it's a psalm of David. Why would David say, I'm poor and needy? Without God, you have nothing. You're nothing without God. Some people really think they done made that money themselves when God poured Nebuchadnezzar in trouble. He had to look around. He remember, man, I remember, you know, causing that thing to be built. You know, just looking around, you know. I remember, I remember I told him where to get the material for the floor, you know. I did this. Many said, oh, Nebuchadnezzar, oh, king, oh, king, it's coming down now. All the way from it. You know what's amazing? You can't hear nothing in heaven right now. But he heard a voice, and he wasn't even of God, all the way from heaven. He heard that voice. Tell him, before I drop you, I'm going to show you why. And then when he's lifted back up, he's informed. He knows. The kingdom's still mine. 
shave him up, look like an animal, put him back on his throne, he know this the real God. But just knowing it's the real God and doing what it says is out of an art. I know who my real daddy was. As far as I've been told, I can look in the mirror sometimes and I can say, man, I look like him. He's gone. I looked at my brother yesterday on my visit. I said, dude, look like my dad. Pretty obvious of my mama because she said I came out of stomach. I knew them both. And I never did everything they said. Isn't that amazing? So was like, he didn't know. Man, Nebuchadnezzar know very well that's the real God out there. But he's still not going to do everything he say. Just give him honor. Tell him about it. Don't talk against him. That's not salvation. You got to do what he says. And finally, another reason is because he is slow to anger. Look at Nehemiah 9.16. Nehemiah 9.16. He's slow to anger. Our God. Slow to anger. You know why it's a blessing? Because boy, if God was a hothead. Woo, man. Boy, you see. Man, there'd be so many funerals. They'd be lined up trying to. You wouldn't even have time to interview an undertaker. Just here, man. Here's a knife. Go work on that body. There'd be so many people dying. Nehemiah 9, 16. He says here. Clearly to us. But they and our fathers dealt proudly and hardened their necks and hearkened not to thy commandments. Nehemiah speaks of the fathers before him and refused to obey. Neither were mindful of thy wonders that thou didst among them, but hardened their necks and in their rebellion upon their captain to return to their bonds. How foolish is that? But thou art a God ready to pardon. See, God is ready to pardon. Gracious. He's great. He don't just throw it at your head. And merciful. Slow to anger and of great kindness, and forsookest them not. It's the only reason there was such a nation still left called Israel. So we have to be appreciative of that, and that's why we praise the Lord. If you're not a member of the church, recognize it's time to get baptized and listen to this message. Press the little triangle at the bottom of the video. Uh, the audio that is before you, you know, show some numbers to call. You need to be baptized. Because I can assure you, you would die lost if you're not in the church of Christ. Recognize Jesus died, he was buried, the third day he rose again. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Jesus himself said in Mark 16, 16, he that believes and is baptized shall be saved. He that believes not shall be damned. And we have to accept in our heart that Peter preached the message and they're ready to dispute it. The drunk, they claim. When he gets to verse 37, they finally ask him, Men and brethren, what shall we do? He says in verse 38, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive to get the Holy Ghost, for the promises unto you, and unto your children, and unto all that are far even as many as the Lord our God shall come, and many of the words that he testified and encouraged them, saying, Save yourselves from this unto war that is a perverted generation. Then they, that God received his word, were baptized, the same day, about 3,000 souls were added unto them, and they continued steadfast, and the apostle doctrine of breaking bread, and in prayers. And the Lord, Acts 2 47, added to the church daily such should be saved. The eunuch wants to be a part of that. He doesn't know how to understand what he's reading. After he's taught by Philip, he sees why. He says, see, here's what the hint of me to be baptized. He says, if you believe it all your heart, you may. He says, I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He stops the chair, and then he baptizes him. And he goes away rejoicing. Paul says, it was a reason it had to be done that way. 1 Corinthians 12, 13, for by one spirit, the Holy Ghost, are we all baptized into one body, which is the church, Colossians 1, 18. For the Jew and Gentile bought and have all been made to drink in the one spirit. Peter says it's saved. 1 Peter 3, 21 and 22. The like figure went to even baptism is also now saved us. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh. It's not a bad. The answer of a good conscience toward God. We responded properly. He says, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's how he gets his power. And where's he who's going to heaven? Where's his position? He is an angel? No. He's at the right hand of God. He's the son of God. Angels, authorities, and powers, principalities, all things subject unto him. If you believe that, you can be baptized now. Jesus gave us hope in Revelation 2.10. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. Now, tribulation 10 days, but be thou faithful unto death. Receive everlasting life. If you believe that, you can be baptized now. But if you have a special prayer request, whatever it is, don't think it's too heavy. Because God can ask anything. Come now, while together we stand and sing heaven's invitation.
Oh, and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me.